we appreciate our choir and we appreciate you that are here tonight. I want to send service out uh, uh, to uh, some folks. Uh, Judy's here. She's been overworking this afternoon, maybe some of the rest of you, but uh, to Gladys and their crew up there, Tom and Ann's been working all afternoon, uh, Martin and uh, Wanda and Wade and uh, I think Daniel, did Daniel go up? Uh, he had to work, I guess. Uh, Jordan and Wade's up there helping out, so we'll just send out to all them. I know they'll be watching here after a while. And uh, I see Grant and Brenda tuning in, and uh, uh, Tammy and Jim and Angela Payne, people begin to log on. We appreciate that. We appreciate you, and we're so thankful. I'm going to ask Jolene to sing one more song before prayer because Tom just come in and got a songbook. We don't want to disappoint him. Uh, Tom, pick it, and we'll sing it, okay? Uh, we'll sing it if you'll pick it. But we're looking forward to great service. Uh, I've got, uh, here comes Finley in. We appreciate him. And uh, we appreciate all of you. Uh, I've, uh, I'm going to preach tonight out of uh, uh, the book of 1 Kings and uh, got a very interesting sermon I'll be preaching on. And uh, on an angle, I've never preached on it before. God gave, so I'll give the exact scripture after a while. And uh, we're just looking forward to the service, and we know we'll have a great service. So we're going to sing another song, too, and dedicate them to Tom. Okay, Jolene? I am blessed. Okay.
want to thank our choir. We're going to have prayer tonight. If y'all want to step down here and as you step down, uh, we want to remember uh, uh, Chris McQueen, uh, Shannon's mom and dad, Joe and uh, Joe and Jim Walters, also David Garland. That's Joyce's cousin. Been in the hospital for the last four days. He came home today. Had blood clots. So remember him. Who else you want to pray for? Uh, anyone? Faye Taylor, Faye Jackson Taylor, Kayla, and uh, Christy Duddy. I'm not here from Christy. If anybody, I see David uh, Hoffman, uh, Huffman watching in, and that's uh, Christy's uncle, David. If you and Billy don't care, if you would send uh, Shannon a message on Facebook to our page right there, she'll see it and let us know how Christy's doing. Christy is a young mother, and she just had open heart surgery, so... Keep her in mind. Josh and Eva at Mill Noise just logged in with us. Brenda Martin, Ashley's grandmother. Uh, that's who I was trying to think of. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon keeps me straight, uh, halfway anyway up there. And uh, uh, Shannon, Ashley's grandmother in Cincinnati. And Chris McQueen was in Cincinnati last we heard, so we're praying for him and different ones that we know that needs her prayers. So remember all these folks. Who have y'all got? Okay. Okay. Remember Dolores. That's right. Donna's uh, a granddaughter, Paige. Who? Yeah, Lisa Manus was asking for prayer for her dad. I believe so it was. I don't know. Okay, Lisa's dad's name Harold. By the way, uh, he used to. Um, I used to be Harold's pastor. So, um, yeah, I sure remember the family. I'm sure you're probably right. Who else? Okay, Tom, why don't you come up and lead us, and then Michael, you see who wants to sing. Okay, maybe you do. Uh, yeah, maybe. You. Uh, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just allowing us to be in your house tonight, Lord. And Father, we ask you just to watch over each and every one, Lord, that's had a request for tonight. And Father, especially, I just want to, it's on my heart really bad, Lord, for Kayla. She's in, she's in really bad shape, Lord. We we'll just ask you, Father, we'll just watch over her. Keep her safe, Lord, and heal her. Just, just touch her heart, Lord. Let her know what you're there for her. And, Lord, we just ask you to watch over each and every one that's sick, Lord. Just be with them. And those that have lost loved ones, Heavenly Father, just touch their hearts, Lord, and comfort them if it be thy will. We love you, Lord, and praise you, and we know that you can do all things, Lord. And in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. this time well first I just want to say good to be here uh thank you for everybody that came out all those watching in uh, remember all those that are out working today as well Daniel Boone Festival um I'm sure that's a very stressful time but also a very uh good time as well um but uh at the, now I'd like to see if anybody would have a song that they'd like to sing I think I know one at least <laughs> Yeah, whenever some people are staring at you, that might be when it's time to go. <laughs> oh, you're fine. While she's getting ready, uh, I just want to say that uh, 
we need to also remember all the I'll tell you what there's a lot of stuff going on right now in our world um, both good and bad of course <laughs> I feel like there's more bad now usually than there is good but uh, you know we need to be praying for our country for our leaders a lot of stuff's going on right now so uh, hey, yes that's right <laughs> an ounce, Vernon says that an ounce of good outweighs a ton of bad, and uh, you are right, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we definitely need to be much in prayer for our country, because if you don't pray, nothing's going to change. And that's been proven throughout history <laughs> with Israel, and, uh, you know, it's still being proved today, and I just, I just felt led to say that, you know, it's a good time to if you, if you don't pray, you know, I don't know what you're waiting for because it's a good time to start. <laughs> uh, we got a lot to pray for. But Holly, come on up here and what are you singing? Tasha. It's a Tasha. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had one that I was planning on singing, then another one jumped in my mind, so I think I better do that one. Okay. <laughs> Just a closer walk with thee.
all, I think that should be the desire of all of us, is to have a closer walk with the Lord. Because he's the only one that can lead us through this world that we're living in right now. That's right. He's the only one that's going to carry us through. It's not going to be nothing that you and I have done except, except accept him as our own personal Savior. But it is going to be what the Lord wants to do and carry us through. You all pray for me. I'm going to try to sing. I came on business for the king. I think sometimes we get away from what our job is in life. And it is to do, tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's our command. And I, just listen to the words of it. Someone here needs help, and I can't do much. But if we keep on praising, he'll send his touch. Healing for a body and a soul he will bring. I came on business for the king. I came on business for the king. He told me to smile and he told me to sing. I can't just stand here and do my own thing. I came on business for the king. So let's not hurry through and close up our hearts. With program so well planned, we leave out his part. Let's pause for a moment to his spirit. Rick Kling, I came on business for the king. I came on business for the king. He told me to smile and he told me to sing. I can't just stand here and do my own thing. I came on business for the king. I can't just stand here and do my own thing. I came on business for the king. Anybody else have a song they'd like to sing tonight? Family, you got one? Nope. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess you ready? Yeah. All right, we'll turn it on over then. <laughs> you know, I like a song. Uh, both the songs, uh, Just a Closer Walk, uh, Artists Are. Uh, in the eyes of God so be to walk close to him and uh, I agree with Jolene on that uh, you know she sang the song I came on business for the king uh, when Jesus was 12 year old and he got apart from his mother uh, and earthly father uh, Joseph uh, for three days uh, they went searching for him and when they found him he said I must needs be about uh, my father's business so it is the business of God it's a spiritual business, so I, I'm thankful for that and thankful for you. And uh, I see watching tonight my daughter and her husband, Debbie and Jeff, and we appreciate them. Uh, Kenny Stevenson, Lola Bunch, Murray Lane Trosper, and Murray, we appreciate you and thankful for you. 
and she's asking for prayer for Cody. That's Murray's uh, grandson. So, Murray, we most certainly be uh, praying for Cody. So, uh, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. If you got your Bibles, I told you ahead of time, I'll be in Second Kings chapter five, and I'm begin reading tonight in verse number fourteen. Uh, this is a story of Naaman. And many of you know that story. I preached on it a number of times. Uh, so I'm going to go back to verse uh, chapter 5 and verse 1, tell you who Naaman is. And I'll read the text in 14. The Bible says, Now Naaman, captain of the hosts of the kings of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance uh, unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So we're preaching tonight on the leper. In verse number 14, when he talked to Elisha, uh, the Bible says, Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying uh, of the man of God. And his flesh became uh, uh, likened to the flesh of a child, and he was clean. And verse number 15, And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said unto him, Behold now, I know, remember that, that there is no God in all the earth, uh, but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, uh, take a blessing of thy servant. And that this is my last verse, number 16. But Elisha said, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will not receive none or nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Uh, next time I preach, I'm going to preach on Gehazi that, uh, uh, that took... Uh, the payment from uh, uh, Naaman, but tonight's message is, uh, and I, I might should phrase it this way because I preached a message one night here, Naaman, uh, Naaman do you know? And uh, uh, tonight to tell the sermon is Naaman, now you know. Tom, would you ask God? Amen. Thank you, Tom. Uh, you know, the story is a lot uh, about a lot more than what we might suppose. Uh, when we think of Naaman, if I brought it up right now, uh, one of you would probably say, well, he was a leper that wanted to uh, dip in the, uh, the river Damascus, and he brought his chariot, and he brought a lot of gifts to the uh, to Elisha, and uh, when Elisha told him uh, not even come out of the house, uh, Naaman would send the servant in the house. The servant would come back out and said, the man of God said to dip in Jordan instead of the waters of Damascus uh, seven times and thou shalt be healed. Uh, the brief, uh, I, I guess, outlined the story tonight. He uh, stayed in his chariot he got, and he told the chariot driver to leave and he left and went down the road and then he came to the realization that he was not healed as such as he came there to be uh, but he still had leprosy in the same manner that he had when he came there and the servant uh, of uh, Naaman has uh, spoken to him and this is the power of words of people you trust and he said Mr. Uh, Naaman uh, said he, uh, if he'd asked you some hard thing you'd have tried to do it or if he'd asked you for a great payment you'd have gave it to him uh, but all he asked you to do was go dip in River Jordan uh, seven times and because he did uh, you were offended and you're going away as a leper I'm preaching tonight on three things about this sermon and uh, you know this uh, sermon's really about uh, about faith more than anything else uh, the Bible tells Tells us that faith is substance thing hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, but also the Holy Scripture tells us uh, without faith it is impossible uh, to please God. Uh, you can do a lot of things, but if you don't have faith, then uh, you'll never please God. Uh, but you know, as I was uh, sitting and uh, God led us to this uh, uh, this afternoon, uh, you know, uh, I was thinking of this, we'll never see the realness of God uh, or our needs met. Our daily walk, as Holly uh, sung about 
uh, fulfilled until we fully uh, believe and follow the word of God. It takes the word of God. And all the prophet did was instruct him how. Uh, that's like a preacher cannot save you. But like Jolene said, uh, we must come on our own and our own uh, awareness that we need to be saved. And then we can give our life to God. All the prophet did was, uh, done was instruct and the rest was left to Naaman. Uh, Naaman accepted what the prophet said and that is uh, a worth of the gospel. Uh, he uh, was assured uh, that it would happen and that's the works of the gospel. Uh, but then he assumed responsibility of his own decisions and that's the wonder of the miracles of the gospel of Christ. Uh, but I want you to stay with me a little while tonight. And the first thing I want to share with you about Naaman uh, and the reason that, uh, that uh, uh, he would have left with leprosy uh, was his disregard for what God said. Uh, you know, Michael was talking about the times we live in. Uh, the times we live in is not only a, a dangerous time, uh, but Michael, it's a time of total disregard to God. I said when Michael said that, he was talking about the evil. Uh, but notice uh, how uh, that your Naaman had uh, no regard at all for God, uh, but just a few words from the man of God. And all of a sudden, Naaman uh, sees the work of God and how miraculous and how wonderful God really is. Uh, you know, you and I, if we disregard uh, what God tells us to do, uh, we will never be pleasing to God. I thought that I want to share with you on that as the disregard for the plan of God. Uh, God has a plan for our life. The Bible says that a good man's steps are directed by the Lord. Uh, we should always listen to what God says. Uh, how many of you have ever uh, thought about if you're driving down a road and you look out and you see a road sign and it's been uh, uh, raining or flash floods and it says water over the road, all you have to do is go ahead and disregard what it says and you will meet uh, unpleasant fate. Uh, Naaman had to not uh, uh, disregard the words of God, uh, but he had to have regard and respect for what God said. Uh, you know, the disregard for the plan of God, he would turn and he'd go away. Uh, but the interesting part about that, uh, Naaman arrived in the chariot as a leper, and when he uh, turned away, uh, he left as a leper also. Uh, God does not promise anything if we disregard him. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans 10 and 17, But then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, Naaman had heard from God. He heard from the man of God. If the man of God is of God, uh, then the words will come from God. And the words that came from God, I uh, listen very carefully to this uh, verse number uh, 14. Uh, the Bible said he went down, that's humbleness, and he dipped himself, that's obedience to God. And the Bible said he came up and his uh, leprosy was healed. And that is where that the work is done. Uh, but we will never, if we don't take God at face value, and the word that goes along with this is accept of what God says, and not only is God's word, uh, but as a remedy for what uh, is wrong in our life, uh, so that we might be able to go ahead and see something happen from the Lord. Uh, the second point I want to bring out is not only did Naaman uh, try to disregard the plan of God, uh, but he denied uh, the progress of God. Uh, God had told him. Now, you may say, where does the word progress come in? Uh, he said, go and dip seven times. First time down and the first time up. I name him was the same. Uh, the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time. Uh, but on the seventh time, uh, you know, the progress was not in the ability of God to heal, uh, but the progress was teaching Naaman a lesson, and that lesson was to depend on God and to do things exactly the way 
way God told him to do. And here is he did. You know, uh, you may uh, look at Naaman and say, well, as he rose up the sixth time, no doubt he was thinking, uh, I'm no different than I was before. Uh, but God progressively was teaching him uh, the obedience, and that's one problem we have in all of our lives, uh, is a sheer in ourself, uh, not only accepting God's plan, uh, but a sheer in ourself for the future outcome uh, if we'll only do what God tells us to do. It's human nature to want to do things our way and then blame God for the outcome. I name him was the same way. Uh, he wanted to do it his way. Uh, he said the waters of Damascus are uh, clear. The waters of Damascus are uh, where I want to be in the waters of Damascus. Uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, what was wrong with the waters of Damascus was simply this. It was not what God told him to do. Uh, you know, as leaders of the church and as you and I, uh, all of us as people of God, uh, we must do exactly what God says to do. Uh, we were in a homecoming Sunday with the Wayne, and you know, I got up, and Roger, uh, you and Charlotte can testify to this, and I'm not going to give details just so that uh, people listen closer to it. Uh, but all during the service, God had told me to ask someone uh, to sing a specific song, and I hadn't done that. I almost laid it down. I almost closed out without doing that. Uh, but y'all were up front, and you remember I turned and I said, uh, this song's been on my mind during the whole service. And the individual that was up there singing with you all looked at me and said, I, hit a, I was on my heart, and God told me before I left here today. I, well, we were almost getting ready to leave, but uh, that's the importance of obeying God. Uh, he may not scream at you. He may not uh, beat you over the head with a a tin a bucket or something like that. Uh, but we must listen to God. Uh, that holy, still, small, unction voice of God that lets us know. Uh, you know, it wasn't about Naaman and his greatness. It was about God and God's goodness and how good God is. Even though that he uh, uh, at first primarily ignored God, uh, God didn't fail him and didn't let him down. Uh, God wanted him to know. Uh, Finley, he could have, uh, the man of God, uh, through the voice of God, uh, could have so easily said, Naaman, go down there and dip once and come up. And everybody was said, Hallelujah, glory and praise unto the Lord. And everything would have been the same. I but God, Naaman had a lesson in faith. How many times do you and I, I need a lesson in faith? How many times has God reminded us uh, that he's still God? How many times does he tell us, if you'll do it my way, I it'll work out. Uh, you know, uh, as I'm thinking about that, I uh, Naaman could have went away and not learned a thing. Uh, but let me tell you something. God not only wanted to heal Naaman, uh, but he wanted Naaman to learn a lesson while he was there. And the lesson learned was, I am God, Naaman, and you're a, a needy individual. And the only way that you'll ever be the way that you want to be is for me to touch you and you listen to my voice. Uh, so uh, the disregard of the plan, uh, Naaman had to accept God's plan, but uh, uh, denying the progress of God. He could have walked away, Tom, on the fourth time up, and he could have went back and said, well, uh, you know, God wasn't going to do anything anyway, but, you know, God is very specific. You remember the blind man, Michael, when uh, he was going to make him see he said, go and wash in the pool of Salam. And he, uh, I, and he was very specific. Is God not always specific when he tells us to do something? Oh, we want to do it our way. Uh, you know, it'd be like uh, the Lord. I'd tell him one of us to go wash uh, 
uh, arise in Woods Creek. And uh, I always say, well, we got Laurel Lake just over the hill from Finley's house. That's not what God said. That's not what God meant. Uh, God won't bless in that. Uh, but you and I as human beings, we say, well, uh, that's more convenient or I'm more honored to do that. Uh, but let me tell you, it's not about you and I. It's about him and what he can do and what he will do if we only listen to him. Uh, I'm like Dwayne. This may be a short message, but I like what Dwayne says. I think of this every time I get up to preach. Uh, he said it may be short, but it's a good one. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, Naaman uh, uh, disregarded the plan of God, and he said, I'll just get in my chariot and go away. Is that not just like man? Uh, not only that, but he uh, uh, no doubt was denying the progress of God. Uh, but the last point I want to share with you tonight is that if Naaman had walked away, he would have totally denounced uh, the prophecies of the Lord. Uh, the Lord, uh, uh, it's a man, Elisha had prophesied and said, if you'll go dip seven times, you know, that's putting yourself out there, is it not? Uh, that's putting yourself on the spot, is it not? Uh, Elisha did not uh, mince words, you know. Uh, he did not play around. He did not uh, uh, stand off or be standoffish. Uh, but he said, now, I'm going to tell you what God told me. And, uh, you know, Michael, that's the job of a preacher and of a teacher and anyone that testifies uh, is to tell people what uh, that God says to them. Uh, we become an avenue and we become uh, a means and a method for God to get his words from his mouth uh, through the years of the uh, person he speaks to uh, to the years of the person that needs to hear it. And notice this, that... Uh, when uh, Naaman heard uh, the word of God, he could have talked about the failures of, of what uh, Elisha said. Uh, but you know what he needed to do? And I want you to really notice this. Uh, he had to assume the responsibility, uh, the personal responsibility of not listening to God. Have you ever noticed we're living in a world, Michael, you sort of set me up good when you said what you did? Uh, because we're living in a world uh, where uh, people wants to uh, blame everybody else, and it's never our responsibility. Uh, you know, it'd be like uh, one of the children uh, dropping a cup, and maybe it's your favorite collector's cup. It breaks the handle off of it. You go in, you pick it up, and they look at you, and they say, it wasn't my fault. Somebody else did that. Aren't we that way with God? I uh, wasn't naming that way with God. He didn't want the responsibility. I uh, bet God put the responsibility on him. You know what God could have merely said? Naming, you can count, can't you? Naming said, yeah, I can count. Or I, I, can, uh, I can add numbers. And he said, well, now, Naming, you go down there, and you, uh, you just bow down and dip in uh, Jordan's River. And if you want to, you can count it out loud. But when you get to seven, everything's going to be all right. And you know, Naaman had to assume that responsibility. You know, Naaman was irresponsible in the beginning. You may say, Brother Vernon, where did you get that? Well, when he pulled the chariot into the house uh, where the prophet said, he didn't even go in. He thought it's too good to go in. Uh, he denounced what God had really told him in his heart. And he told the servant, go in there, and whatever he tells you, come out and tell me. Servant's obedient. The servant goes in there. He comes out, and he said, well, he said to go dip in Jordan seven, seven times. Easily uh, to understand. Very easy to do. Uh, very methodical in what the Lord said do. Uh, it wasn't complicated, nothing comple uh, complex about it. But Naaman looked at the servant, and it made him angry. The Bible says that he got angry, and he uh, told the chariot driver, said, turn, uh, uh, turn around and take me back home uh, because I'm refusing to do uh, what uh, that uh, the servant said that the prophet said unto him. Let me ask you a question. How many of us uh, think that we spite God? We don't listen to God. How many of us, when we don't listen to him, we say, well, I showed, uh, I showed them. I remember growing up, and uh, 
I get mad at mom or dad, and uh, I, they'd scold me over something. I'll say, a mom would say, come on, eat, Jolene. I'd say, I'm not eating. Boy, did I show her. I, boy, did I show her. I was starved to death. I mean, I was uh, my stomach a growling and a hurting, and I'd sit there, I'm not eating. I went on a hunger strike. And let me tell you something. Uh, a little bit of that uh, got me to know it's better off to listen, uh, bathe, than to sacrifice, and hearken than all the uh, burnt offering and fat of the rams because I didn't uh, teach nobody nothing but myself. Was not naming the same way. How many times have we done that? You may say, well, I've never pouted up, not ate. Uh, I, I doubt that that's true. You know, I, I seriously doubt that that would be true. Uh, but at the same time, how many times have we got angry or wrath against the Lord or said, Lord, I'm not doing this because you didn't do that? Well, let me tell you something. Our God is a results God, not a bartering God. Uh, he don't barter with us. He does not do that. You know why he don't barter with us? I don't know how many of you know what bartering is, but it's giving one thing for the worth of another. That's like giving two ducks for, uh, for a pig or two pigs for a cow. Uh, but God don't uh, barter with us. You know why? He don't need anything we've got. We're the one in need. It wasn't God that had leprosy. It was Naaman. Naaman uh, got on that chart and said, I'll show them. I'll show them. But he had a uh, servant of wisdom, uh, maybe not rank. Have you ever noticed rank don't uh, make wisdom, does it? Uh, he don't do that. Education don't uh, make us smart. It just uh, uh, makes it where we should be, you know. Uh, it don't make us smart. Uh, I said one time, education is knowledge, and wisdom is to know how to use that knowledge. Uh, but I'll tell you what. Uh, he had a servant that was wise. And he said, Master Naaman, you're leaving the same way you came. Is that not a mistake? And he put that, put the decision back in uh, Naaman's lap again. And Naaman began to think about it. And it weighed heavily on him. You know, if you're out there watching and, uh, uh, and you're lost tonight, you may say, well, I'm not uh, giving my life to God uh, unless I can uh, do it when and how I want to but God don't barter with you he don't barter with you he gave his son to die his son gave his life and he told you and I that if we go into heaven we must go through Christ and you know that's the way it is uh, so you know just think about that tonight how, how valuable it was God had a plan for uh, Naaman's healing but Naaman had to follow it God showed him progressively what it meant to have faith in God. Naaman, you're not going to be healed the third time up. You've got to be faithful all the way to the number seven. And he showed him that. But let me tell you something. Not only that, but he said unto Naaman, Naaman, through Elisha, I prophesied unto you. I don't know how many of you watching or how many sure believes in prophecy, but prophecy is nothing more of telling them a future event. But you know, if it's true prophecy of God, there's one thing about it. It has inherent accuracy. I'll say that again. It has inherent accuracy. God said it finally, it'll happen. If God said it, it's true. If God said it, you can get ready for it. It's like when Elijah told King Ahab it was going to rain. Just as soon as God showed Elijah the sign, Elijah sent the word. Let me tell you what, God sent the rain. Is that not good enough? But let me tell you something. And I want you to remember this. You'll never know the realness of God or never see your needs uh, met, either whether it be a great need or a daily need, unless you, uh, in your daily walk, until you fully follow uh, God's word and God's instructions. Michael, you didn't sing tonight, but so why don't you let the rest of us rest and won't you come and bring an invitation uh, as I look back tonight at her wall I see Lisa York Jackson watching in from Florida Lisa we love you and appreciate you Chrissy McBride Lavonna Shore uh, Judy Fields Don and Doris watching tonight we appreciate all, all you guys and we appreciate the ones that cheer 
And uh, I want to remind our church of something. I've had a many of a person say, well, I couldn't join you in the service on Wednesday night. Remind them that they can go back and watch that later if they want to and be part of our service. So we're thankful for each and every one of you. And let me tell you this. Uh, don't be like Naaman at first and fail to do what God asked you to do. Be like the Naaman of late and obey God. And you also always see results from him. God bless you tonight. The, the altar is open. If you're watching, Michael said the other night, if you're watching and you need to pray, I make you altar anywhere you're at. And uh, God will gonna be right there with you. He most certainly will. Come on, Michael. Counts the stars one and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. Sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures, great and small. He knows my name, every step that I take. Every move that I made, every tear that I cry, He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day, I know I'll be alright. He knows my name. Don't know what tomorrow will bring Can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers to The questions of life But I know in whom I have believed He knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make, every tear that I cry, He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. Can't see the light of day, I know I'll be alright. He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make. Every tear that I cry He knows my name When I'm overwhelmed by the pain Can't see the light of day I know I'll be alright He knows my name He knows my name He knows her name, does he not? He knows every step that you take, every move that you make. That's a good song. We're going to sign off on our Facebook Live, but we uh, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be back uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock, so everybody keep that in mind. And uh, we appreciate you that are here tonight as well. And uh, Jason, let me know when it... Uh, 